Hey, what's up life groups? Let's dive into some questions and some content for you guys this week. I hope your groups have been going incredible so far this semester and I've been praying for you guys. But hey, if you guys have your Bibles together, let's open up to Mark chapter seven. This past weekend, we just talked about the heart of the gospel and one of, in my opinion, Jesus's best teachings and most vital teachings he ever gives us. I'm gonna read a version. I just got a couple conversation questions for you guys to maybe discuss together as a group based off of this weekend. But I love right here in Mark chapter seven, when Jesus says this in verse six, he says, Jesus replies, remember he was talking to the religious leaders and they're having this conversation about traditions and rituals and, and Jesus is talking about why he's really here. And he says, you hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. He said, for he wrote, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce for they teach man-made ideas as commands of God for you ignore God's law and substitute it with your own tradition. Yikes, that's not what we wanna hear from Jesus, right? I wanna hear like, well done, good and faithful servant, or I'm pleased with you, or I'm inspired by you, you fill in the blank. But to have Jesus show up and say, the prophet prophesied about you saying that your worship was a farce and that you worshiped me with your words rather than your heart. I think this is a really big idea for us, especially in our communities of life groups of what does it look like to worship God with our heart? What does it look like to surrender our hearts to God? What does it look like to not just be all about talk, but to actually put our skin in the game and to get things going? I've got three questions for you that we talked about this weekend at church that I, I hope we can go into some deeper discussion about in life groups this week. Number one is just simply that idea. Are you worshiping God with your words? Or are you worshiping him with your heart? One of those illustrations we talked about is the example of like, are you furnishing like all your furniture outside of your house? Or are you building the, the house from the heart? Like, are you dedicating a space to live? Because can I tell you, God wants to live in your heart. Your heart is the throne for him. So he doesn't just want us to use words because you know, anybody can say words. Anybody can tell God they love him, but not anybody is willing to worship him with all of their heart. And I love what Jesus is saying here because it's so encouraging for us to say, hey, your traditions pale in comparison to your worship. Give me your heart. Jesus is after your heart. He's not after a checklist. He's not after a, a, a tradition list. He's not after the, anything other than true worship that comes from the heart. And so I'd love for you to just discuss that with your groups. If you wanna pause the video, you could do that. But what does it look like in your life to worship God with your heart? What are some ways maybe as a life group that we can give God more of our heart and not just be people who are good with words like the Pharisees were? Because can I tell you, God doesn't care how well you speak if you give him your heart. So maybe pause this video right now, talk about that with your groups. How, what are some ways in which that we can worship God with our heart? What are some ways in which that we can give him more of ourselves and just worship him where we are? So you guys can talk about that right now. All right, now that you've talked about that, let's go to question number two that we talked about this weekend. The idea of, are you sidestepping or surrendering to the gospel? Like, what are some ways in life that we actively avoid God's truth or we actively jump away or ignore God's instructions or direction in order to hold on to whether it's traditions, comforts, things in our life? And I think that picture we talked about this weekend of like ignoring the directions when they told you not to take the test. What are some things in life that maybe were like the religious leaders here, maybe were actually intentionally holding on to tradition instead of law. Maybe there, that's something like that in your life. Or maybe there's just something like that test example where you're so worried and hurried to get things done that you're not reading and seeing what God is saying or how the Holy Spirit could be speaking to you. So maybe encourage each other, share, share some practices, share what God's doing in your life and how the more you surrender, right? That picture of palms up, open surrender, like giving everything to him, putting it all on the table, letting him move and work in your life. How have you seen that in your life? Maybe so, what are some ways that have helped you to surrender? Or how can we not sidestep the Bible and God's truth in his presence in order to hold on to the things that we think help us achieve? So you can pause this video. You can talk about that with your group here for a second. All right, number three, last but not least, this idea of like, do you need a heart transplant? Man, how incredible would it be if maybe in our life groups this week, there's some people who you've been here for the community, but you've never fully trusted God with your heart. You've never fully given him your life. You've never declared him as Lord. I can't think of a better space, a safer space, a more welcoming space to maybe have this decision that will change your life than with your life group. I would encourage you, maybe this isn't a question so much for you guys, but maybe within your life groups, one to two people, share your testimony. Talk about how God healed your heart. Talk about how when you surrender to God and gave him everything and you confess him as your Lord, how he began to sanctify 
sanctify you and renew you and strengthen you. And, and then maybe that'll be, the, that'll be the, the story, that'll be the, the thing that pushes somebody over the edge in your group to possibly trusting Jesus with all of their heart. Because can I tell you, God is after your heart. He's not after your hands. He's not after your words or your traditions. He wants your heart because when he has you, what do we say this weekend? Clean hands don't lead to a clean heart, but a clean heart will lead to clean hands because Jesus is working in and through your life. So I encourage you, share share your testimony. At least one person in every group, share your testimony this week. Talk about how God has saved you, how God has healed you, how God's doing a work in and through you. And I pray that that's an encouragement for your groups. But man, let's not miss this. Let's realize the heart of the gospel is the heart of Jesus.